One thing I cannot emphasize enough here in this channel and with my community is the importance of listening to English if you really want to become a confident and fluent user. In fact, I've made several videos on the topic of listening and I'll leave a little playlist for you down in the description box for you to watch later. But for now, you'll be practicing listening to English much more than I expected because I've prepared a very special video for you. And that is a conversation that I had recently with my colleague and friend Heriberto, who speaks not one or two or three, but many languages. Heriberto is a polyglot. But here's the thing, and it's what makes this video even more special, and it's the technical difficulties that arise and force us to adapt in the moment. So you normally see me recording my videos here in my little studio, but because Heriberto and I live in the same city, I thought, well, why don't I go to him and we'll do, I'll take all my equipment, we'll do the recording there, and then, you know, it'll be a different setting and I, and instead of being a Zoom meeting, um, we can do it face to face and it'll be different from my regular videos. What could possibly go wrong? Hello, it's quite a cold 17 degrees Celsius and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Tanya Meyer. I'm the founder of Confident English Training, operating at the intersection between efficient language learning, the practice of awareness raising, and increased levels of happiness and well being. What's not to love? Well, what went wrong is that the camera froze for most of the interview and I've turned this video into mostly a listening video. This kind of forces you to exercise your listening skills. So that's what we're doing today. We are exercising our listening skills and we're listening to a conversation between a polyglot and myself talking about tips and suggestions to improve your English skills, to continue developing your English skills once you have reached a certain level. Once you're independent, then you know you do have options at your fingertips and Heriberto and I speak about what the, some of those options might be. So let's get started with Heriberto talking about what made him become interested in foreign languages and how he became proficient in English first. Do you identify with any of what Heriberto says? Comment below, what's your English learning story? Here we are with my friend and work colleague, Heriberto Diaz. Thank you so much for this interview. I think that your story is a story of inspiration and motivation. And so I'm really looking forward to speaking with you about how it's been for you in terms of English and other languages. So why don't we, well, first of all, welcome and <laughs> thank you for thank doing you. this. Thank you for thinking of me. I'm very happy and I hope I can be also a source of inspiration for other people who are trying to learn their first, uh, second language, mm -hmm, right? exactly. or third, fourth, whatever. Exactly. So let's, let's start there. Let's talk a little bit about your story because from what you've told me, it, it, it wasn't always written that you would be where you are today, head of languages department at one of the top think tanks in Mexico City, because you were brought up in a monolingual environment, right? So right. you were brought up speaking Spanish. Right. And right. was it was it an expectation that you would that you would be a proficient speaker and user of English? I don't think there were any expectations. Um, at least uh, I mean, where I grew up, it was normal not to study any English. We're talking about Mexico City, you know, from uh, a family of 10. We're a big family. I'm the youngest of 10. So 
Um, it was more of a curiosity, I think. Mm -hmm. Because the first time I was exposed to English, I must have been, I was eight years old. And my mother took me on a vacation trip where I heard English for the first time. And it must have been some, well, I, she told me that there were some Canadian uh, people, like women, who were talking to me. And I was so curious, like, just looking at them, you know. And, and listening to the sound of English just made me, I don't know, it was something I loved. Like, I wonder what they're saying. I don't know what they're saying, but it sounds, it sounds nice. It sounds beautiful. Right. We're going to get back to the conversation with Heriberto in a moment. But did you notice what he said about the word curiosity? What part does curiosity play in your English language journey? Post a comment below and let's get the conversation started. When I came back from that trip, my friends and people would ask me the typical question you ask to an eight-year-old, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I would say, I want to be a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> because in my eyes, tourists got to speak English and to travel the world. Right. And so, uh, I, but, but I think that's the seed, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, made me develop this passion for other languages, other cultures, uh, to discover the world. I had a very good experience in my first English lesson, and for the first time I felt like I was good at something. I could function well in that subject. I mean, I was always a very good student in most of my classes and subjects, but with English, I felt like I was accomplishing something. I felt like I was saying things on my own. And, and this was with a very limited amount of English that we receive in the public schools in Mexico, in secondary schools. Right. And that's, uh, that starts at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. So by the time I finished uh, secondary school, when I was 15 years old, I had had two very good English teachers and what not so good, <laughs> but I still, I, I mean, I still liked English. English, English. And so I, I asked my teacher from third grade in secondary, which is the last one before going to high school. Um, I said, well, I want to do what you do. Where did you study to become a teacher? And she told me exactly where to go. And I went to that school to start learning English because, yeah, with whatever I learned um, in secondary school, I only learned notions of English. Yeah. It's not like I learned under a good environment, meaning the teachers have this approach or methodology. I mean, it was very rudimentary, to be honest. And um, I mean, with all the respect I have for, for my school teachers, you know, they only did what they could sure. back then. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was fortunate enough to um, go to this place where my teacher told me. Yeah. From day one, I started learning how to talk and how to express myself. I went to that school for um, almost three years. Mm -hmm. At 15? At 15. Mm -hmm. So when I was, by the time I was 18, I had already completed from basic to advanced. It's I mean, most people only do the basic courses, and they can get by. I mean, it depends on what job they want to do. Right. But I was so in love with English and with school and with learning um, that I went through all the courses. And when I finished, I thought, well, the most natural next step is for me to do the teacher training program. Right. And so I did it in one year. Okay. Uh, I had a very good... Uh, um, well, group of teachers and mentors who, to this day, I still I still see them in congresses, and, and I thank them for the inspiration and, and for making me believe that I could become a teacher. You know, you became proficient in in English very quickly. You trained to be a teacher. You started teaching, and then when did the other languages come in, and what what other languages are there? Well. Um, so when I was in, um, I started this job already when I started studying French. Mm -hmm. And I took French for about 10 years on Saturdays. Wow. So it wasn't something I did during work. Right. I did it on weekends or after work, which to me was adding time to my, to my obligations. But to me, it was a pleasure to just go on Saturdays and speak French. And, and just get immersed in, you know, the 
the culture, because even who, even people who study uh, a language have an interest in the culture, or have a connection, or have a relative, mm -hmm. or are just interested in in language. Because I I did develop a <clears throat> a good group of friends, so we learned uh, French on Saturdays, and then we cooked on Saturdays, like French Food. things, well I would not cook, I would bring, I would bring some wine or something, but my friends cooked and, oh. and we were always talking and reading about French culture, so that's, I think that's, that's a key element, if you want to learn a language, live that language, Definitely. read that language, exactly. eat that language, Right. and that's if you have the ability, dance. <laughs> to the rhythm of that one. Oh my gosh, that's you such know? good advice, and it's yeah. exactly, you know, what I try and 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 uh, promote in in my program is exactly that. Once you reach a certain level of proficiency, once you're say autonomous um, right. at intermediate level, I mean, it's a bit of a, a struggle to get there. But once you're there and you're able to to communicate, then definitely you're ready to start seeing, you know, how to bring it into your life through the culture, like you say, through the food, the music, uh, yeah. the movements, the Movies, culture. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's And such... talking to people, and if you can travel, don't wait until you finish all your advanced levels and then travel. Oh. And don't wait until you finish all the levels to say, oh yeah, I took French. Exactly. And you can do it from, you take three courses of a language. You travel to the country where it's, the language is spoken, and then it becomes a reality. Exactly. Then your 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 mindset is, oh, I speak French. Oh my God, that's right? so important. I'm not learning French. I'm what? learning French, of course. And do I speak French? Yes, I speak French a little. Yes, but I speak French. Mm. So once you change, me. exactly. Once you change that mindset, then you're there. Then yeah. it's just a matter of time. Because if you if you never get there, oh. I mean there are so many other factors that sometimes prevent you from talking. Um, people are self conscious about, oh, what am I going to sound like? You know, in another language, or I'm going to be making mistakes, and and we all make mistakes even in our in our in our own language. Exactly. Let's just relax. So another important thing to become a good language learner is to think about. Um, well, first of all, acknowledge your identity. Mm -hmm. So I'm Mexican and I'm always going to be Mexican. But I always like to talk about this because people are very uh, self-conscious about what they sound like. Because in a lot of teaching environments, they make me feel bad about their accent. You know, now that's going away. We don't have much of that. It's still there. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a school where they tell you, oh, you sound too Mexican, Leave you the know, school. Leave the school. Yeah. yeah, leave the school. No, I mean, this is something and that... And embrace I'm... who you are. Exactly. And then do your best to communicate with others. And there is enough room for more, you yeah. know? The way we can yeah. expand right. uh, in in unlimited ways. Right. So we right. don't need to betray no, our no. own identity, our own culture right. to bring English in. I mean, right. English can coexist. Yeah, so let me tell you, I went to the uh, Mexican North American Institute, mm -hmm. and so most of my teachers were, were from the US. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, if you for example, they would not, we would not have exposure to British English, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and you pretty much had to imitate the way they spoke. Right. So imitation, yes, it, it, it's a good idea for practice and for drilling and for learning sounds and everything, but more than anything, try to be exposed to different accents and um, don't, don't, uh, don't get married with the idea that only one, the English from one country yes. is going to be the best, even in Spanish, right? Who says that uh, in Peru we speak better English than, I mean, Spanish. Spanish than in Cuba or in Mexico. Exactly. I mean, that, those are just subjective um, opinions, right? Yeah. That you might like one accent or another, that's another thing. Right. But uh, just be open. Yeah, I always talk when it comes to pronunciation in English, I always say to my clients, look, 
it isn't about accent, it's about intelligibility. Exactly. So the degree to which an English speaking person can understand what you're saying, then don't worry about anything else, right? You right. can sound right. it, whatever you are and that's fine. Right. So you can deviate from the native sound right. uh, to an extent but not, no. not so much that it becomes unintelligible, right. but as long as people can understand you, then don't worry. Yeah, so when I started learning English, and we're talking about 1985 to 1989, back then it was about trying to sound as native as possible. So I went through a lot of that, and I went through a lot of the pressures of, you know, I need to, I need to repeat that a lot of times until that I until sound sounds American. Like and I had the opportunity to go to the U.S., so I did have more exposure to U.S. Uh, in English from the U.S. Right. And also, uh, there are neighbors, so I mean, it's right. it's natural. Right. Like here in Mexico, we should we should speak in in more of an American. Right. But twang. later with time, I discovered that when you forget about, oh, I need to sound like others, you know. Um, it's such a relief, you know, to say, I, I, I want to sound Mexican because I'm Mexican and I embrace my own identity and I don't need to sound like anyone else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and this is me and I'm proud that I can still manage to communicate with people from other countries and other cultures. Great. So there's another factor, right? I said, lead the language, um, eat the language, breathe the language. Well. I had a relationship with someone from Brazil. Mm -hmm. So, and then we lived in Mexico for three years. Mm -hmm. So my house became Little Brazil. Right. Little Brazil. Little so, Brazil. So yeah. every, on weekends we'd have friends over and we, you know, we cook like Brazilian yeah, dishes and right. we would drink the uh, cachaça. Cachaça. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and we would listen to music. Mm -hmm. I, I got a lot of music from. From Brazil, I love Bossa Nova. Right. Yeah. So it became like a, a Portuguese-speaking environment, the, the, the right, house. Right. And that's a good idea too, oh, yeah. you know, because immersion is something that I really encourage students. Uh, uh, they don't need to travel to the country for for two months or whatever. I mean, of course, if they have the possibility, then yes. Right. But many people don't. But creating immersion conditions at home. Is something that can be done. So Portuguese came to me very naturally and to this day I still like sometimes I elaborate thoughts in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. That's so an excellent thinking tip. Thinking right. in the language you're trying to learn. Of course we're thinking all day but most mm -hmm. of the time we're not aware of the fact yeah. that we're thinking. We're just on autopilot going right. through our day but making it. Well first we need to stop and and be aware that we're thinking, right? right? And then we need to create the intention yeah. Yeah. to think in English, because mm -hmm. that's what my program is. <laughs> and my, my own language was German. 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 And that, again, I started in level one. I went to the Goethe Institute in Colonia Roma, mm -hmm. and I met a very good friend of mine. So I made a lot of good good friends like for life friends right learning learning, learning languages. languages so let's just recap we've got english well spanish obviously is your your first language english then french and italian somewhere in between somewhere, yeah. then portuguese then the german german came in. right and i did german for about 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. So you're a proficient German speaker. Uh, I'd say I'm a B2. A B2. Yeah. After how many years? 14 years. 14, 13. So this is also an interesting point, Eliberto. The length, right? The length of time, um, you know, so not being discouraged, no. continuing to be involved. It doesn't, the level doesn't really right. matter, all of that. Do you right. think it's true right. that, I mean, it's, it's the I mean, I think it's part of the approach. When you start, for example, when you start doing a PhD, you think, well, it's going to take five years, and it's a process that begins today and ends on graduation day, right? Right. So it can be very difficult, like mentally and, and even emotionally, right? Uh -huh. But when it comes to the language, I think that's a process that you need to enjoy all the way through. Right. You cannot possibly wait until you obtain your advanced diploma right. or, or get your proficiency examination, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think you need to uh, you need to set goals little by little. What I'm trying to say is that to learn a language is a long process, no exactly. matter what language it is. Exactly, and that if I can just you know pop in here is that that's the reason why in my program I offer lifetime access. Right. So once people join, then they're in for life because you know yes there is an urgency sometimes. Oh, I I need to learn English because. I want to apply for this job or because I'm traveling mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So there are these short term goals, yeah. but then, you know, there is, there's no, there's no expiry date on learning no, a no, language. No, exactly. And, and, and that's, that's why I'm very happy with the, the program you've created because to me, that's what's needed. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me put it this way. Um, I do have a lot of respect for like language learned in classroom settings, uh -huh. right? Be it distance or face-to-face, uh, -face. but because that's how I've learned all my languages. Yeah, I've gone to school. I'm not the type of person who goes to, let's say, Japan and I'll okay. stay there for three months and I'll learn. I'll probably learn, but I don't have the time because of my job. Right. right. So I go to school, I take a couple of years of the language, uh -huh. then I travel, and then I see that I can do things in the language. Yeah, I'm not proficient, but I'm getting there. And some day I might get there. Or you continue not. engaged. After right. you come back, right. you continue engaged. Right. And this question of going to a classroom at the beginning is very important it's because very important. nobody comes into my program if they haven't reached that intermediate right. level already. Right. So they need to have had some kind of formal learning. Um, but so what you're they... offering is something that people don't get anywhere. Exactly. I just like to. Um, emphasize that there's no magic formula to learn a language but there are a lot of factors and things that you can do to make yourself want to speak a language as you were saying you've studied German for 14 years and you're at a B2 slash C1 level mm -hmm. and that's absolutely fine so how long you've been studying English isn't really indicative of anything as long as you continue to be engaged right. and you notice right. and you can correct right. a little bit right. here and there. In Can't. language classes, people end up talking about the language. Right. Like, this is no space to, we're not going to be linguists, all right. of us, right? Um, so let's not talk about the language, let's use the language. And that's, that. I, I finished there. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> there. You know. That's awesome. Eliberto, thank you so much. Thank you very much time. for inviting me. And, um, well, anytime. I, I really enjoy this. Yay. This space and, um, Do you agree with the approach Eliberto suggests? I'd love to hear from you. So don't be shy and post a comment below on how Eliberto's approach is similar or different from your own. And did you notice the part where I speak about my English training program? Find out more about how it can help you become more confident and fluent in English by exploring the links in the description box. Remember that you can also download my free 30-page guide, How to Revolutionize Your English with Audio, that is filled with tips and suggestions that you can put into practice straight away. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Take very good care until then. Bye for now.